Hi everyone, greetings from the sunny Vietnam. Good morning, good day, good evening. My name is Ye Sien, and I will be telling you about the steps that we make to become leaders in the Vietnam pizza market. I have been here for two months in Vietnam since I arrived and over six months remotely we have been working to launch this new direction. And I'm happy to share with you the things that we have done already and share our plans as well. I mean, it's lunchtime in Vietnam, so we've done some business and there's something to share as well for today. So, let's keep on rolling. We're going to open 234 pizza places in Vietnam in the upcoming five years. The presentation is titled What we are doing to become brand number one in pizza in Vietnam. And we do understand that we need to open very quickly. We need to deploy very quickly in the new market to take the leading position. And in the presentation I'll be telling you what we have done already to achieve this particular goal and what we are planning to do. For a start, let me tell you where I'm coming from. Here is the geography of Dodo Pizza in Orange and it is expanding year after year. And this green spot is my home country of Kyrgyzstan, where five years ago we opened the first pizza place. During the five years of working in Kyrgyzstan, we've achieved significant success with the team. We've opened five pizza restaurants and now they are actively building the fifth one. Greetings to my team in Kyrgyzstan, by the way. You guys are gonna make it with the fifth one and you get even more. I'm certain about that. But we have realized that the team is strong, we have grand ambitions and Kyrgyzstan is just not big enough for us. And we are ready, we're willing and ready to open Dota Pizza and the new businesses in the new countries, expanding our borders. So we began thinking of where to go. We took a look eastwards towards southeastern Asia, since that region is booming. And also one of my partners, Ruslan Kaibukaev, in Vietnam has been working for five years. He sees the economics as an insider and economy in Vietnam is definitely booming as well. So we looked at the region and we began with Vietnam. Why? Why Vietnam? Because potentially it is a vast market, a large population, 20 times bigger population than my home country of Kyrgyzstan. Vietnam at the moment has very fast GDP growth and year after year the growth is evident. Overall Southeastern Asia and Asia overall um, is growing very quickly. Every single forecast says that by 2050 this will be the financial center of global economy. And even today we see that Asia is very strong. That's why we want to be the part of this development. We want to be in the epicenter of this exciting events. That's why challenge accepted. We accepted the challenge and decided to stride forward. I arrived here two months ago and the first thing that I did was buying a motorcycle. Why? First of all, it's just awesome. I've always wanted to have a bike. In addition, I wanted to feel the daily life, the daily commute, the daily routine of a standard citizen of Ho Chi Minh City and Vietnam. Over 95% of the population here drive the two-wheelers. Public transportation is underdeveloped and there are really few cars. So most of the people drive some sort of a two-wheeler. So I wanted to feel what it is like. My mission was to experience as the person who is in the new reality. I wanted to experience this new universe of Vietnam. I have never lived abroad for a long time and I have realized that I need to get out of my comfort zone and try to understand the way the average Vietnamese think and live, meaning how our future clients think and live. And Ho Chi Minh City is actually a vast city. The population is about 12 million people, pretty much like Moscow. The area of the city is 200,000 square kilometers, again, pretty much like Moscow, and there's no subway. As I have said, public transportation is underdeveloped, so everybody is driving two-wheelers. 
This is the way my average day looks like. Every day I'm traveling in a traffic jam, not in a traffic jam. Every day I ride about 30 kilometers. My meter shows over 2000 kilometers ridden in the last couple of months. So, what was the benefit of that? I began to adapt. I began to understand how the average client behaves. I began figuring out the ways to attract attention of the client. For example, one of the insights is when we compare ordinarily the average speed of the pedestrian and we measure traffic, therefore, in the CIS countries. We measure, normally, the amount of people passing by the restaurant, by the facade of the restaurant. In this particular case of Vietnam, we measure the number of bikes passing by. There is no pedestrian traffic whatsoever. So the human is walking with a speed of 5 km per hour. The bike is riding with a speed of um, 40 km an hour. So the difference is by the factor of 8, 8 times faster. So we need to actually put 8 times more effort into attracting the attention of this fastly moving traffic. For example, if the client is riding with a speed of 40 km an hour, this is sort of tunnel vision, that's why the facades need to stand out, they need to be more noticeable, they need to stand out. That's why many businesses use this sort of horizontal perpendicular banners on the facades, so that the riders would notice them. And when I'm approaching, for example, I can see that this is the place, this is the brand, I will not pass by, I will potentially stop. Another thing that they do is that they use a lot of sound. They put down large speakers, joyous music is playing, and when somebody's riding by, the person can actually hear and pay attention. This is how the businesses are fighting for the attention of the traffic. Another insight. I began immersing myself into local cuisine, tasting the things that the Vietnamese are eating. And I have discovered, actually, that food is very accessible and very cheap, especially street food. There is no standard notion, like in CIS, with, of the cantina. There is no this notion of cantina, like in CIS. Here, this need for cantinas is covered by street food, and it is actually possible to have a very tasty meal for a dollar or a dollar and a half. But there is a, there is a catch. There's an issue. Food safety. What sort of ingredients are they using for those foods? That is the question. And there is a number of incidents when, for example, there are food poisoning. There was even the absurd case. Some coffee places were using coffee beans that, that were actually produced in China. And they were produced from batteries mishmashed with soil, earth, with some sort of food additives and chemicals. That was really a scandal here in Vietnam. So here's what we observe. For the time being, street food occupies the major chunk of the food and beverage. This is Euromonitor in 2020. Almost half of food and beverage market is occupied, is taken by street food in Vietnam. But chains are growing as well, year after year. And we actually observe this. What is the potency of the street food? What is the advantage of street food? Actually, they're not only accessible in terms of pricing, they're also very, very quick. They can cook a lot of food by traditional lunchtime or breakfast time or dinner time, and students or workers at the local offices arrive, and it takes about 15 or 20 minutes to have the full meal. And as a matter of fact, we have this at Dodo Pizza, we just need to integrate it in a smart way in this market. I mean, hot and ready products. By the way, none of our competitors in pizza is doing that. We can use this um, advantage the strength of Dodo Pizza, to position ourselves apart from street food, so that people would have the alternative, knowing that they can go to Dodo Pizza and have a quick meal and again spend about 15 or 20 minutes there. We are in the tropics. Vietnam is a tropical and a very humid and hot country. It's over 35 degrees in the street right now. And again, 
when the sun is also very hot, very active, you need two things – shadow and drinks, preferably refreshment. And again, coffee is very popular here. Vietnam is a coffee country, one of the largest coffee exporters in the world, by the way. You see this figure. The consumption of food and drink in 2020, drink is actually more popular than food. I have realized, um, personally, I've looked at my personal budget. I just split how much I spend on drinks and how much I spend on food when I eat and drink outside. And it turns, out, turns out that I drink two times, three times more often outside than I eat outside. And this is the context that you find anywhere in Vietnam. You can find drinks, coffees for any budget and any taste. One dollar, three dollars, branded chains. Or something super cheap like a coffee in supermarket for half a dollar. By the way, any supermarket here, like a corner store here, offers freshly brewed coffee, robust Arabica with milk, black coffee. That is why, for the first time at Dodo, we decided to use the espresso machine, a hybrid coffee machine from WMF. That machine makes a better, higher quality coffee, because um, the coffee that is normally made with a super automatic coffee machine that is normally used in CIS is just not treated seriously here in Vietnam. I mean, when you just go out into the street and 20, 30 meters away, there is always a coffee place, wherever you are in the city, in the suburb, in the central part. So we need to be able to claim that we have high quality coffee in our restaurant. That's why we need better equipment, better gear, and just put a bit more effort into teaching the team so that they would make really good coffee, good beverages, because this is particularly important for Vietnamese climate. This is not the empty market, that is not the green field. The biggest competitor is Pizza Hut, they have 90 pizza restaurants. The second largest chain is Pizza Company, this is the Thai chain, they have 70 restaurants. By the way, Pizza Company is the third fastest growing chain in Vietnam and Dodo is the first fastest growing. So it's quite curious that for the first time we are the fastest growing chain in a particular market. Domino Pizza 51 pizzerias and Pizza for Peace, that is the pizza restaurants in the Italian style and they have been founded by a very talented Japanese entrepreneur. So this is the market. And it's pretty exciting that the market is more or less established. They have been in the market, these chains have been in the market for about 10 years. I mean, there is the demand and people understand what pizza is and they have, they have certain culture of eating pizza. That's why we need to accelerate. That's why we need to go full throttle in order to occupy our share of the market and go ahead of our competition to become number one. Looking at the product, if we spread our competition in terms of product, price, restaurant and delivery, I mean the focus of competition, we can actually draw this sort of graph. Pizza Company is more of a restaurant format with service, with restaurant. Interior is sort of Italian style, traditional Italian style. Pizza Hut, compared to Pizza Company, is a bit cheaper, more accessible, service is slightly worse. Domino, usually, as anywhere in the world, they actually emphasize their strategy purely on delivery, with weak restaurants and more accessible price. And Pizza for Peace is the most premium format in Vietnam. And by the way, Pizza for Peace only have 20 restaurants and Domino's have 51, but income and sales of Pizza for Peace is bigger than for Domino's. I mean, one pizza restaurant of Pizza for Peace earns three, four times more in sales than any of the other competitors' restaurants. That's why. This is a viable model in Vietnamese market. We'll see, we'll take a look at it in terms of quality. 
Because for us, it's important to maintain our level of quality. For us, the question is which spot we should occupy on this scale, on this graph, so, so that we would have better chance for success. So we do realize that we need to make a product that is better than three of our major competitors. Maybe a bit lower than Pizza for Peace, because they're definitely restaurant format, they're more premium and they have a different type of pizza, Italian pizza. On the other hand, we can focus more on delivery. That's why we have better chances to be better, particularly at delivery. Besides, we have the app, and it's really good. And none of the competitors can boast with the app. None of them has the app. Even the large chains in Vietnam do not have the app. That's why, when we enter the market, we'll have more competitive advantage. Besides, we see the Euromonitor stats in 2015, 0.1% of orders in Vietnam were made online in food and drinks. But in the five years, that number increased by 6.8% of orders that are made online in food and beverage. Aggregators are growing very quickly for delivery, food delivery, I mean. That's why they're also boosting the online market for online orders and delivery. So that's why we will be pioneers amongst pizza restaurants. We are confident in the product. And I'm happy to share another joyous piece of news. About a couple of years ago, we have actually discovered the recipe. You see, our dough on the photo, Pavel below, is our product expert. He does the development. He spent five months testing 26 types of flour and over 50 mixes to find the dough that would be airy and porous. Also, we have tested 19 sorts of mozzarella cheese. I mean, the work has been tremendous and we are now satisfied with the result. Now we're just fixing little things. Um, actually, we're testing our first menu and in a month we'll be doing our focus groups. But we objectively observe that our product is definitely in many ways better than the competition. And finally, in order to open the first pizza place, we need to find the space. We have been looking for the space for about six months. We have looked at about 100 places. But it's hard to find a good one with a significant potential. So we have, have, we have found the place, the three-storied building. And here's the teaser. On the third floor, we're going to have the kitchen. And the actual restaurant floor will be on the first one and the connection will be via elevator. The product elevator will be just sending the pizza with the elevator down there to the kitchen floor, to the restaurant floor, I mean. 99% of the places that we have looked in Vietnam are normally two or three storied buildings, four-storied buildings, and they're always narrow. That's, by the way, another difference from Eurasian markets. This is how the buildings look in Vietnam. This is a normal sort of building. I was first very much surprised. I've seen the buildings that are three meters wide and six stories high. That's the real estate market on Vietnam. We need to adjust. And here we see a lot of places that have kitchen on the upper floor and there's, there's just a product elevator. And we need to adapt to use the space as efficiently as we can. And some more good news. As I have said, we need to accelerate even faster. So one pizza restaurant is not enough. That is why about two hours ago, I arrived from the meeting at the notary office and we made this photo two hours ago. We have actually signed the lease for the second place. So we'll be building two pizza restaurants in the center of the city simultaneously. A beautiful place in the very center of the city near the tourist sites, when the tourists return to Vietnam, there will be so many people here. But even now, lots of offices around and lots of young people around. These two restaurants that we shall open, they are here on the map in the center of the city. And they are at the busy streets, lots of traffic there, about 10,000 bikes drive by per hour. And that will be two flagship pizzerias at the very heart of Ho Chi Minh City. We want to show our brand from the best angle. That's why 
full throttle, please stay tuned. And also, I would like to tell you how we are going to open 234 pizza restaurants in five years. Of course, we could do it on our own, but it's better to get some partners on board. That's why we bet on the creation of the system, of the community, where there will be sub-franchisees and, of course, us, for the first two years, will be focusing on building our own chain. But next year, after that, we shall be looking for partners openly and avidly, looking for dodo people amongst potential entrepreneurs to open pizza restaurants in different cities of Vietnam. We observe now that the community in Eurasia, the community of Dodo's partners, is enormous. There are over 2,000 people at our community events, but it has not always been like this. About eight years ago, this was our community of partners. So you always have to start with something. And we always started with openness, transparency, fair competition. And young entrepreneurs have always been ready to invest their effort, their knowledge, their savings into Dodo. They were selling apartments, selling their personal belongings to start Dodo business. They trust Dodo. And we see that in Vietnam, this is the time when there is a number of people who have certain savings. That is investment potential. There are people who are full of energy. They are vibrant. They are open to new experiences. And they can become our partners, our sub-franchisees. By the way, our competitors do not use franchising model in pizza. That is why, if potentially somebody in the regions of Vietnam would like to open Dodo as a franchisee, they can only do it with Dodo. None of the competitors offer that. So I believe that in a year we shall have the up and running business model and we shall be able to make attractive, mutually attractive offers to entrepreneurs in Vietnam. That's why, again, stay tuned. We'll be happy to share the news and we're also open to your feedback. Have a great week.